Hey gang, I didn't want to make this video because I don't like criticizing people, even if it's frustrating to me and my work. Most of the time I just let it go. But then I thought, wait a second, you know, I've based my whole being on trying to save you all some money and compare things and give you my real world experience from 30 plus years. So I would be remiss if I didn't do this. So that's why I'm doing it. Let me just make that clear. I am not going after these people. It's not a unguided missile attack. I've just become so frustrated and I've spent a lot of money and I want to talk about it. So Acoustica plugins. This is an open letter to Acoustica and to all of you out there. Now, Acoustica makes some super high end and frequently great plugins for audio. They really do. Now, they put out a new plugin, it seems, virtually every two weeks. That's pretty ambitious, but a lot of them are great. I would say, Maybe not every one they put out, but 50%. That's a pretty good average. 50% of the stuff they put out, I feel, has great value. However, if you talk to anybody who's been doing this for a long time, they will tell you that there are more than a few issues with Acoustica plugins. Very high CPU very high CPU usage. In fact, most computers that home hobbyists, recordists, people who don't do it for a living, let's say, their, their computers are not gonna handle these plugins. That's an issue. We've all known about that for a long time. There are pros, there are friends of mine. Mark Daniel Nelson, who's mixing the Hannah McCartney record I just produced, has spoken about this before, that their, their plugins, Acoustica plugins, are so CPU intensive, they could, they could crash a session. And I have had that happen. I have talked to many other big time pro engineers. They all have the same issue. I have a custom built computer, as does Bob Olson. We had them built from the ground up specifically to not only be the most powerful computers you could get for audio, but specifically tailored for Pro Tools. A lot of plugin developers don't like AAX, which is the Pro Tools format for plugins. I get it. They would prefer VST because it's easier to code. But if you're gonna sell something, you're gonna have to have it be bulletproof, especially since I would say 70% of the pros that I know use Pro Tools. I was just at Blackbird, one of the best studios in the, in the world, if not the best. They are Pro Tools based. Almost every studio I know in Nashville, I don't think I've worked at a studio in Nashville that wasn't Pro Tools based. And those guys were telling me, oh, Acoustica, oh my God, what a nightmare. Right. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. My first experience with Acoustica customer support was a few years ago when I kept getting crashes. And it was whenever I opened one of their plugins in a session. Now that would seem pretty simple, but you know what? I'm a fair-minded person and I know it might not just be that plugin, it might be that plugin combined with what already was in the session, how many plugins are in the session, how many tracks, what sample rate you're running at, the, the settings you have. Okay, so I go through the trouble, thanks to great training by Bob Olson, of troubleshooting all that. And every time it came down to their plugin. So this was my first experience with them about three years ago. And I wrote to them and I said, blah, 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 blah. Here's what happened. This is how we diagnosed it. This is how we fixed it. What say you? And the guy wrote me back, one of their tech guys. Yeah, we hate AAX. AAX is a pain in the ass. Okay then don't make plugins for AAX. It was like I had this conversation with uh, Universal Audio, because I'm on a PC, and I kept having, I bought the Apollo and kept having problems with it. And then finally, I confronted them at 
the trade show at NAM, and they were like, listen, buddy, let's just be honest with you. 90% of our business is for Macs. Um, we don't care about PCs. Then don't sell it for PCs. So anyway, don't make an AIX plugin if you don't know how to code for it, or if it's a pain in the ass, or if it's cumbersome, or whatever. Okay, that was three years ago. Now, and I was really lucky in this new case. I was mixing a, an album that Henry Kaiser and I had done together, and you know, I was under the gun because I'm going to be moving soon, and I was trying to get it done, and I wanted to get it to Bob Olson to master because I don't master my own stuff. That's a really dumb idea. Get another set of ears. And Bob's the best. He taught me everything I know. And when he sent me back the master, something was weird. And it wasn't what I heard when I bounced it. However, I bounced it offline, not in real time. So Bob says to me, yeah, you know, the vocal sounded like it was flaming. And I'm like, well, to me, it's way, way behind the beat, um, which is okay for Willie Nelson, but that's not how I sing. So I opened up the session and Bob said, open it up, check it out. Tell me what's on the vocal chain. I open it up and it plays fine. It plays fine, like live. And I'm like, okay, it's playing fine. He's like, what's on the vocal chain? And I only had two plugins on the vocal chain. And one of them was an Acoustica Audio plugin. Bob says, ah, Acoustica Audio. Uh, audio, so listen, take that off. Take that off, put another plugin in, doing the same settings, and bounce it offline and see what happens. Son of a gun, it's fixed. It's done. So I went in, but wait, I didn't stop there. I went in, I checked all my settings. I made sure my plugin settings were optimized because you know, things get changed when you update sometimes. No, no, no. You know, I get that there are certain pros who have junior assistants do it, or maybe they don't know because it doesn't matter most of the time they use the same plugins. And let's just say something about plugins here that code matters. Coding matters. The best plugins are the most stable plugins, and that's why a lot of pros use the tried and true Waves, Oxford, FabFilter, the built-in ones to Pro Tools, you know, the ones that have proven themselves solid over many, many years. That's a good lesson to learn. But you know, Acoustical Audio is all this cool stuff, <laughs> as do plenty of others. Now, before I go further, I also wanna say that I've had problems with other plugin developers in the past where there's been crashes or incompatibility between other plugins. Because again, you can open a plugin on a session and that plugin's not the problem. It's the way it's talking to something else and they don't have to be on the same track. Yes, that's true. We'll get into that some other time, but that is a fact. Good to know. So I've diagnosed stuff before, but virtually every other plugin developer that I've brought this up with is like, okay, send me a crash report, blah, blah, blah. And they look at it and go, yep, yep, it was our plugin. I'm on it. I'll recode it. I'll fix it. Beautiful. However, once again, the tried and true, some of the boutique plugin companies are not tried and true. It's not that they're not great. It's not that they don't make cool stuff, but they're not tried and true and their code may not be as stable. Acoustica Audio. Now, you know, you'd think that because they've been doing this for a number of years and have had complaints, they would fix this, especially since they're releasing plugins every two weeks, right? Okay. This is the same company whose owner attacked his own users, if they used cracks, because someone had finally cracked their system code and put it up uh, on a Reddit or something. Now, I never use cracks. I, play, I pay for my plugins. I don't, I don't, that's for another time, because that's unstable too. But he attacked his own people and said, if anybody's using cracks, you will be wiped off the record. You will not be allowed to have any more of our plugins. And in fact, all of your existing plugins will be null and void. Wait, wait, wait. 
the ones we've paid for will be null and void. Anyway, it was a, it was a public relations disaster. He backed down from that. Acoustico Audio is also known for attacking people on YouTube. There, look, go check it out. There are other YouTubers who have complained about this or complained about a certain release or, or, or just were critical and Acoustico Audio has attacked them. Now, they seem to have changed their tone, but let me just start, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. I don't wanna bore you too much, but this is important because you should save money. Again, I like Acoustical audio plugins. But let me say that in the future, henceforth, I will not be buying anymore. I don't care how cool they are. And I will only be using them for mastering because you simply cannot rely on them for multi track sessions. So the first contact I have with them over this new issue, they're like, oh, go to your playback engine and change all the. Dude, this is like. <laughs> this is like Bozo 101 for recording of what settings to have for your plugins and your playback engine and your buffer and whatever. Okay, bud, thank you very much for that lesson. And I told them so, and they were like, oh, well, we don't mean to impugn you. Yeah, okay, whatever. You're just stalling at this point. More crap, This do this on your playback engine. More crap. Do this on your, yeah, okay, thank you for that crap. And then, you know, more of their help, to, and then they're like, well, uh, we can't recreate this problem in the office. And I'm like, okay, did you try it at 96K? Because the session I was doing was 24-bit 96K. Oh, no, but what we want you to do, <laughs> we want you to tell us the sample rate of the session, which I just told them, could you tell us what, how the report happened? Does it happen in a new clean session with no templates or presets? Please provide a step-by-step -step procedure, which I've already done. Send us a short video so we can see how it works. I'm gonna take, I'm working 12 to 14 hour days in the studio, trying to get an album done for a client. And then you want me to make a video? to help you diagnose what I've already told you is the problem? Okay. Please send us a screenshot of your application. You know, they have an application that you download the plugins where we can see that you have the latest update. Now, I update twice a week, all right? I'll send them the screenshot, but that's also nonsense. Anyway, it just keeps going on and on and on. However, when I finally say to them, you know what, guys, look, I'm not buying your plugins anymore. I'm done with you. You know, this is insane. Your code is bad, okay? I'm not the only one that thinks so. I've talked to many, many, many other pro engineers who work at a super high level, who have Grammys, gold, platinum records, have made thousands of records, and we're all saying the same thing, but we're wrong and you're right. And they charge a premium price for these things. So that's why I'm doing this to save you money. Again, I'm going to continue to use what I own by them, but only in mastering and not in multi-track sessions. It's not reliable. Work with what's reliable. Save your money, because this stuff ain't cheap. The acoustical audio stuff ain't freaking cheap. Now, let's just wrap this up by I'll tell you um, where I told them, look, you know, we're not idiots, we're pros. We've worked out this on our own time, what the problem was. I have bought my last Acoustica product. And they're like, well, it seems like you've found a solution. <laughs> yeah, I found a solution to not use your product anymore. And I said, yeah, that's my solution. I am only gonna use it for mastering. It's not stable enough for multi-track. You may think the code is fine, but in the real world, it is very wonky and I'm not the only professional who thinks so. We've had many discussions about this. We meet at trade shows, we meet in studios, we meet for lunch, we talk on the internet. This is not a surprise. Everybody knows that there's an issue. Your code is bad. Cool products, but your code is bad. So yeah, I can only use it for mastering. I will not be using it on any multi-tracks anymore. 
And besides, like I said before, they've addressed the CPU issue somewhat over the last couple of years, and kudos to them for that. It's better than it was, but it's still not great. It's still not great. Some products, the, some of the more recent products are a lot better than the others. Now, to wrap this up, my final, that final message I just read to you where I said, look, we all know this is bad. Your code is bad. We all talk. We all know. Come on. I can only use this for mastering. It's a mess. They wrote back, this is great. We agree with you in your assessment. I can't believe they said this. This is awesome. And I commend them on this. Bravo. They're in Italy. And it hurts me to do this to a fellow Italian, but okay. We, we agree with you in your assessment that the code of our products can be substantially improved to avoid some unexpected behavior and make the products more reliable. Ah, oh, excellent. We know uh, that our developers are working on the use of new technologies and that they even plan to rewrite some codes from the beginning to provide a better experience to our users. We hope you have a better results regarding reliability in the future. We truly appreciate your comments. Let us know if we can help you with something else. So, okay, that's a start. But in the meantime, until you make those changes and fix those issues, save your freaking money. If there's something they make that seems indispensable for you, okay, maybe for the two bus, right? Maybe for certain buses like drum buses and, 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 and guitars and, you know, bass, whatever. But even then, be careful with the latency bouncing issue I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm just saying be careful. I don't want to demean or, 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 or destroy anybody's credibility, but just be careful. Be aware. But on the two bus or in mastering, it's less important because whatever latency is created on that track is static, right? So you're not going to be out of sync with every other part of the multi-track. So if there's something to you that's indispensable, and trust me, they have some what I consider indispensable plugins, but I've, I've, I've got probably, I don't know, $3,000 invested with them overall, if not more, but at least $3,000. So you'd think my patronage, my, 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 my investment into their product would be more important. But out of all of those, and it's probably like 100 plugins that have you know, racked up a couple grand, three grand worth of uh, investment, I would say there's five or six that are indispensable. No joke. Not that the other ones aren't cool too, but there's only five or six that are absolutely indispensable and I would find hard to eliminate from my arsenal for mastering or for my mix bus. The rest, I don't know. What say you? I know I've rambled for a while, but boy, this has been ticking me off for weeks and I gotta say it to save other people money and to save you heartache or I wouldn't be doing my job to stay quiet on this. So. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you being here and staying <laughs> through this whole tirade, but um, you're awesome and I appreciate all my followers. So thanks and save some monies.